Hello, these are flipped notes 2-1 for AP Psych. Uh, we are just starting unit two, which is the biological basis of behavior. Um, so this is a huge unit in the AP Psych course because we're coming up with the physiological reasons for behavior. Uh, and as we talk about these parts of the brain, we'll be able to relate this stuff for the whole rest of the year. Um, some textbooks call this the neuroscience chapter. I often just like to call it the brain chapter. Um, but whatever it is, we're here. Um, our first section is about the organization of the nervous system. I've got my Bitmoji ready to fight because a big part of this section is the fight or flight response. So the nervous system is made up of two other systems, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. Uh, the central nervous system is where we'll spend most of our time in this unit, but today we'll spend more time in the peripheral. Central nervous system includes the brain and the spinal cord, and then we will talk about all those different parts of the brain and their functions in a different section. The peripheral nervous system includes the autonomic and the somatic nervous system, uh, and then as well as the sympathetic and the parasympathetic divisions. Let's see, did I go too far? The nervous system um, consists of <clears throat> all the nerve cells, and we know from what we've already talked about in class, that we have 86 billion neurons uh, in our body. And the majority of those are made uh, right when you're born. We do know that we can continue to make nerve cells and brain or brain cells, um, but the great majority are there right when we're born. Um, the nervous system is the body's speedy electrochemical communication system. Um, so electrochemical, meaning that there's a neural impulse, but there's also a chemical side to the messages that the nervous system is passing along. The contrast to the nervous system will be the endocrine system, and that will be in another section of notes as well. So our central nervous system consists of the brain and the spinal cord uh, right there in the center of the body. And then the peripheral nervous system is all of the stuff that extends out from the brain and the spinal cord. And that includes all the sensory and motor neurons, uh, basically everything that connects to the rest of the body. Uh, the central nervous system, of course, the brain is the power center and controls the rest of the body. And um, the spine acts as sort of a highway uh, to transmit those messages that go down from the brain and then back up the spinal cord, carrying messages from the rest of the body to the brain. The peripheral nervous system, or the PNS, I don't usually go by the letters though, uh, includes the autonomic nervous system. Um, autonomic, you can think automatic, but don't write automatic on the AP test. But the autonomic nervous system controls all the involuntary things, so things that happen automatically in the body. Um, that includes breathing, heartbeat, digestion, all that stuff is going to happen whether we think about it or not. The other half of the peripheral nervous system is the somatic nervous system, and these are voluntary things. Uh, so movement, communication to and from the sense organs, you control these items, they don't just happen, but we won't spend as much time there in this, um, in our course. Most of the somatic nervous system stuff is not included uh, in our thinking part of behavior. So more on the peripheral nervous system, that somatic nervous system though, the part that we do include um, are the nerve fibers that go down and up the spinal cord. So we have two types of nerve fibers that we wanna know. The afferent nerve fibers are carrying information into the CNS, inward from the body. So think of afferent is ascending. They both start with A. So if you were to stub your toe, that signal would ascend from your toe up the afferent nerve fibers, up your spinal cord, all the way up to your brain. Then your brain would have a response to the body of what we want the foot to do with that. So the efferent or efferent nerve fibers carry info outward from the CNS, from the brain and the spinal cord to the body, and that exits down. So afferent is ascending, efferent is exiting down the spinal cord. Um, and again, the other half, we have somatic and autonomic. The autonomic nervous system is divided into two more parts, uh, the sympathetic division and the parasympathetic division. And these are both super important when we're thinking of behaviors, especially when we're thinking of things like fear that have an automatic response. So the sympathetic division's job is to get the body ready for action, whether it's going to be to fight in a situation or maybe to flee. 
So we often call the sympathetic nervous system the fight or flight response. Uh, it mobilizes our internal organs, just gets our body aroused. And when we say aroused, in this case, we mean alert. Parasympathetic then is going to be have the job of calming the body down after the action and conserving the body's resources. And we call this response rest and digest. And it will make more sense here in just a little bit. Uh, one more visual here between the central nervous system and the peripheral. So again, our central nervous system is our brain and our spinal cord. The peripheral system is where we have those sensory and those external kind of nerve fibers going out from the spinal cord. So here, somebody has their finger uh, and it, if it touches something, those feelings are going to go up the afferent nerve fibers. Um, they're going to relay to interneurons, which we'll talk more about in the next section. Uh, it goes to the brain, and then the brain is going to send messages back down on the efferent neurons or the motor neurons uh, to the muscles and the glands. All right, so let's talk more about that fight or flight response. So this applies to any time where the body feels that it is in danger. It could be true danger, like you're being chased by a bear or you're walking down a dark alley by yourself at night. Or it could be perceived danger, like you have to give a big speech in a few minutes. Or it could be um, kind of an excited nervousness danger, like there's a big game coming up Friday night or, or you know, in a few minutes. So, but either way, the body, the brain's job is to prepare the body for action. And it is specifically the sympathetic nervous system's job for that. So it is on alert, it is arousing, it is getting the body ready for action. Let me move my image of myself out of the way over here. So some things happen. Um, so let's imagine that, let's pick walking down a dark alley at night by yourself, which you shouldn't do. Don't ever be by yourself in a dark alley at night. But your body's gonna help prepare you, even before you necessarily recognize that you are scared. Your body is gonna pick up on the possible danger of the situation. So one of the things that's going to happen is your pupils will dilate. So this is when the dark part of your eye gets bigger. And when that happens, it allows more light to enter the eye. So even though you're in this dark alley, you're going to be able to see a little bit better. Your heartbeat is going to pick up. So a lot of things happen when that heartbeat picks up. Your body, your, blah, your heart is pumping more blood, and that's going to give more power to your muscles going to help oxygenate your blood. Uh, but basically, it's putting you ready on alert. Um, your body's going to inhibit digestion. That means it's going to put it on hold. Um, so it's going to say, we don't need to digest right now. We're going to save that energy and let's put it into something else. But sometimes it has a weird side effect. That means now you might have food just kind of sitting there in your stomach. So sometimes when we're real nervous, um, you just kind of feel like real queasy in your stomach, and it's because that food might not be digesting. It's just sitting there on hold. Um, that's also why oftentimes when we're like doing something really exciting, we don't realize how hungry we are until the excitement is over. Like, man, I haven't eaten all day. And then all of a sudden, now I'm hungry. Like you you feel it later, but you don't feel it while you're in the action because your, your body puts that on hold. Um, it stimulates glucose released by the liver. The glucose is going to be an energy for source for us. So more energy stimulates the secretion of epinephrine and norepinephrine by the adrenal gland. Um, so these have a couple effects. They both help to kind of speed up the heart rate, um, but they can also help with pain um, and more energy. Think adrenaline. Uh, and then the bladder is going to be relaxed. So when the bladder is relaxed, you don't have to go to the bathroom. So that's also why, again, you're like having fun all day or you're playing a big game or just doing something and you don't have to go to the bathroom for a long time. And it's because it's part of that sympathetic nervous response. Um, some other things that are over here in the diagram, increased, uh, increased secretion of the sweat glands, salivation is inhibited, so your mouth may feel dry. Um, your respiration is increased, your bronchial passages are dilated, your hair follicles are raised, so you get goosebumps and your arm hair may be standing up. So all of that, so a lot of things happening there, all of that is part of the fight or flight response. All right, so um, our next one then, so now let's say we have gotten past the danger. You've been walking down this dark alley, um, you're by yourself, um, your eyes have dilated, your heart rate is up, um, and then you get to your car and you're like, okay, I'm safe. I feel okay now. So now your body realizes it's, it's out of danger. It needs to kind of get back to homeostasis. It needs to get back in balance. 
So it is the parasympathetic nervous system's job to get us back there. So it is calming the body down. It is trying to conserve resources. So really, it's almost like the opposite of everything that's just happened. Now our pupils are going to contract. They're going to go back to their normal size. Our heartbeat is going to slow. Um, digestion is going to be stimulated. All of a sudden, we're hungry now. We weren't hungry before, but now we feel it. The gallbladder is stimulated, and that the gallbladder's job is to help process all that extra glucose that was released by um, the liver. And the bladder contracts. All of a sudden, you got to go to the bathroom. Uh, salvation is stimulated. So now you start um, you start to have more saliva in your mouth. Your respiration slows down. Everything's going back to normal. So we call this side of it rest and digest. Um, so this one's showing a few of the same things, but a lot of the effects are noticeable. That your pupils dilate, your mouth goes dry, your shoulder and neck muscles tense. So a lot of times when we're in like prolonged stress throughout the day, we don't realize it, but we're holding our our muscles and our shoulders up high. And then at the end of the day, you're like, man, I'm so sore. And it's because you've been in this fight or flight mode. When you're under stress, you're in fight or flight mode. Heart beats quickly, breathing is fast and sweating. But the things that are going on underneath the surface, your brain is getting everything ready for action. You're producing adrenaline, your liver is producing that glucose and your blood pressure is up. Um, we're going to talk about this stuff that's on here a little bit more when we talk about the brain parts, but I want to go ahead and say it now that the part of the brain that's really triggering all of this is the hypothalamus. So the hypothalamus is triggering this fight or flight response. Another part of it that's not listed on this chart is the amygdala. The amygdala helps pick up on danger and triggers part of the fear response. So the hypothalamus is activating the sympathetic nervous system. It's telling glands to release hormones. It's activating the medulla. Um, and medulla helps with intense emotions. We're releasing norepinephrine and epinephrine. All of these help um, to kind of get the body aroused. You've heard of epinephrine if you've ever watched any like medical drama shows where somebody starts coding and their heart has stopped and they say, give them epi. And they give them a quick shot of something. And epinephrine gives this sudden boost um, to their system. Uh, and also, also, if a person is having an allergic response, um, they carry an EpiPen and they get epinephrine. And that's going to help suddenly help to kind of like clear their airways, help their heart, help their body to respond uh, to the danger there. So giving even more epinephrine than what the body is um, already creating. We've got the pituitary gland and some other parts of the brain creating even more hormones. And then it's all in that bloodstream. So, and we're going to talk about this in the endocrine system, but when we have hormones left in the bloodstream, it's hard to calm down right away. That your body kind of has to finish processing those extra hormones. So even though you may be out of danger, you can still feel that your heart rate is still a little bit high. And that's just because some of that stuff is still floating through the bloodstream. All of that, though, um, neural activity and hormones combined to do this fight or flight response. Um, again, summarizing here, so we have the autonomic nervous system, which is part of the peripheral nervous system. We have the sympathetic system. So sympathy, um, another way you can help remember it, um, when you kind of feel sorry for somebody, you feel sympathy. It's like your body feels sorry for you that you're in danger, so it's helping you take care of yourself. Um, so fight or flight, and then parasympathetic is what's slowing us down, calming us down, that is rest and digest. One more thing here, there are some things that are not things that, are, um, that we control, and these are our reflexes, automatic inborn responses to sensory stimuli or stimulus. Um, so let's say you step on something sharp or you accidentally touch your something hot on the stove. Your sensory neurons are suddenly excited, um, and they're going to pass that message on to an interneuron, uh, which goes to the spinal cord. But your spinal cord is going to respond right away, and it's going to activate a motor neuron to go back right away and make you flinch. So it's not going to try to send that message all the way up to your brain from your finger and then all the way back. Instead, you get a sudden, oh, like you have to jump. Uh, and, you know, like, why did, you know, someone asks, why did you jump? Like, nothing even happened if somebody tries to scare you. Well, you didn't do it consciously. It was a reflex that your body thought that there was danger there, um, or there actually was from pain. Uh, and it was your spinal cord replying. So then later, or I'll just read this part here, reflexes don't send a message to the brain first. The response comes from the spinal cord. 
then another message will still continue up to the brain that, that that's telling you kind of what's going on and especially if you are feeling pain. All right, so reflexes, they just kind of happen as an automatic response here from the spinal cord. All right, so that was the fight or flight response and that is it for flip notes 2-1.